same way. What may happen this time may be the release of a Department of Defense bioweapon. We've had some very, very troubling news that's come out yet again. There's every couple of months we find out about a massive loss of control with weaponized viruses and diseases. And yet, again, this is happening. We see this happening over and over and over again. Another expose, we've got a report on it on Infowars.com as well as a report from USA Today because uh, there's a reporter there that's been very good at following these kind of releases. They bring in the deadliest bacteria. This time it's the Black Plague and other pathogens. They weaponize them. They call them select agents. This is militarized, folks. This is what the Department of Defense is doing along with the CDC. They militarize these deadly pathogens that are not native to our area, and they weaponize them. They call it gain of function. That's Pentagon speak for making them more deadly and more easily transmitted. We should be very concerned because they're also extremely lax in the way that they handle this. They're constantly getting out of their biosafety labs, even shipping them in standard FX, uh, Federal Express uh, shipping containers, which is what we're seeing happening yet again. So maybe that's the way the next 9-11 is going to come. And, of course, we could always conveniently blame it on the terrorists, uh, whether it is an accident or whether it is deliberate. They will use it that way, folks. And, of course, we've got Donald Trump joining forces with Pete, uh, with, with Senator Sessions against the TPP, perhaps. That would be a very welcome thing. I, I don't agree with the rationale that Donald Trump has put out. Maybe he's doing that to walk a political line. But if he opposes it, I will take it. Anyway, it goes. So we're going to talk about that. I find that to be a very hopeful sign. And, of course, John Boehner, one of the people who supported Fast Track for Obama, Obama trade. He supported Obamacare in reality. Why wouldn't he support Obama trade? And, in fact, he did. And we now have some congressmen like Justin Amash who are talking about why they would should oppose uh, the Iran agreement because he says this is a treaty. And it needs the votes of the people. We have a constitution. Remember that? Remember where we started? The Supreme Court Justice, Justice Breyer, says that we need to take a globalist view. The constitution doesn't matter to any of these people anymore. That's why they can do something like the transatlantic or transpacific partnerships, which are really treaties, and say we don't need to go through the constitutional process to do it. Well, they're not going through the constitutional process with this agreement with Iran. And whether you're for the agreement or against the, the agreement, you should understand that we don't want to be ruled by dictators. And that's precisely what they're saying with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Many of the people who oppose it say, look, like Donald Trump, he says, I don't necessarily oppose a, a, a trade agreement like this, but I don't want Obama negotiating it. Well, everybody can say that. We don't want to have a nation that is ruled by the dictates of one individual. That's called a dictatorship. We have this in every area of our government now. Remember, when we're talking about the, uh, the rules that the uh, NSA broke when they did dragnet surveillance, we had uh, the generals, uh, Hayden, saying, well, I didn't need Section 215. I had a direct order from the president. I had a direct order from the president. That trumped everything. We know what that kind of government is called. It's called a dictatorship. We have a dictatorship when it comes to national security, of course, because everything has to lay down for national security. That trumps everything. We could care less about individual liberty anymore. I mean, this has gotten to be an Orwellian world that we live in where safety equals war, just like Orwell's peace equal war equals peace, that type of thing. That's what they're selling us. You can never be safe, people, if you give up your freedom. You're then a slave, a prisoner. Prisoners and slaves are not safe. You're never safe. The only way that you can ever hope to achieve safety is if you put liberty first. You cannot trade away your liberty for security or for safety. But we see that coming at us over and over again. And I want to go back to what Alex Jones was talking about in the last segment when he was talking about the massive influx that is happening throughout Europe, or as we may soon be calling it, Eurabia. That was Mark Stein's uh, term for it, and I think it's, it's clearly going to uh, fit. He was talking about a demographic change in the sense that Europeans 
we're not reproducing anymore. You take a country like Italy, where they used to have uh, the highest number of children per family, well over five, and now it's well under two, which means that they are cutting their population almost down to one, which means that their population gets cut in half every generation. So if you have any immigration from Muslims who do have a high number of children in their family, then they are going to very quickly take over the demographics. But now, now it has accelerated quite a bit. So let's talk about that. Before we do, I want to let you know that this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by BrainForce. We've just got a new shipment of BrainForce in from our manufacturer. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. Both listeners and the InfoWar crew can't stop talking about what BrainForce does for them. I take it regularly. I've noticed a real difference with me when I take it. And so it's something that I do all the time, take it regularly. Unlike some energy drinks and supplements, things like just taking caffeine, Brain Force uses natural brain activation ingredients like Yerba Mate extract and Alpha GPC. Brain Force on InfoWarsLife.com already has hundreds of five-star reviews that you can read for yourself, along with all the other research and information. Let me read you one of those reviews that's on our site right now. And that's a good way to determine wherever you're buying products. That's, that's one of the things I like at Amazon.com. I can see people's reviews of the product there, and we've done the same thing here. Here's Lydia from Bedford, UK. Uh, she says she takes one to two tablets a day. She finds the clarity of thinking has increased massively. So do I. Uh, another one by Blue from Gainesville, Florida he says, at first I was skeptical because I didn't notice or feel an immediate difference. But after three weeks of daily use, I started to feel razor sharp in the afternoons after taking brain force while eating lunch every day. On days that I did not take the supplement, the intensity was not there. Bottom line, it works and I have reordered it. And, of course, you can take a look at the ingredients. You can do your own research online. You can look at the comments from people on InfoWarsLife.com. And, again, we have Brain Force in. Get it while we have it in supply because it went out very, very quickly when we first introduced it, and for good reason. Now, Alex was talking about this massive crisis that's going on in Europe. Germany has been the centerpiece of where everybody has been going because Germany is really the victim of political correctness, quite frankly. They've become so sensitive, and rightfully so, based on what happened with World War II, that they are so eager to prove that they are not like Hitler and the Nazis that they bend over backwards to take everyone. But you know what? They can't do it. It's not possible. When we come back, we're going to talk about the emergency controls that have been put on in Germany and why. How people in Europe and Munich are saying, how can we cope? They can't cope. We'll be right back to talk about it. Stay with us. As we begin the show, Alex is breaking down the news about what is going on in Europe, the massive, uncontrolled immigration. Well, I talked about it on the nightly news on Friday night. I talked about the barbarians at the gate, and that's what we're seeing with Western civilization. And that's not, a ref that's not calling the people who are fleeing the war that we created in Syria. That's not... A reference to them. I'm talking about the way the Roman Empire came down. When people invaded the Roman Empire from outside, those who were there no longer really cared to maintain the Roman Empire. They were fed up with the corruption. They were fed up with the oppression. They really could care less. That's an element that you see right now, but this is also part of political correctness. We see people, as I mentioned when we we're going to the break, in Germany, they are so concerned to show that they are not anything at all like Adolf Hitler that they will destroy themselves and commit suicide as a nation in order to show how caring and compassionate they are to other people. You can do that without destroying your nation, but they're very concerned about political correctness. And now the suicide pact is political correctness. I understand the popularity of Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a white male. He's actually even rich. And you know what? He's not ashamed of any of it. Uh, maybe he shouldn't brag so much about it. And he would not be as offensive to so many people. But people are so sick and tired of the cowering of the false shame that's being imposed on people that Donald Trump comes across as very powerful, as the antithesis of all this. And, of course, people are fed up with the corruption in government. But this is also something that is being manipulated by the elitists, by the globalists who are trying to create a world government. This isn't just a breakdown of society like it was with the Roman Empire. They have already engineered out and have been working for several decades. Going back to the 1950s, we had the plan for the European Union, for the Euro. 
And of course, economic crises, these kind of immigration crises, and the partnerships that we see that are being collected. They are all part of this globalist plan that we can now see very clearly. We've been telling you how this was designed, how it was engineered. Most people don't want to read the books that Zbigniew Brzezinski wrote. They don't want to look at the mission statements of the Trilateral Commission, three different blocks around the world that they are now creating so that they can then combine into the next step of global governance. They don't want to look at the blueprints. They don't want to look at the plans. They want to pretend that none of this stuff happened. I'm not listening. I'm not listening is what the media says. But we can see that it is now playing out. Let's take a look at specifically what's happening now. As you can see that B-roll of the massive influx of people coming in. The people in Germany want to help these people that are suffering severely in this war that we created. But they say, how can we cope? Munich is overwhelmed by the record influx. And as they're saying, scenes of Germans waiting at the Munich station, carrying refugees or welcome banners, clutching teddy bears to give weary children their long journey from war and persecution, have also become endearing images of an unprecedented migrant crisis hitting Europe. This reminds me of the teddy bears and Glenn Beck going to the border saying, I'm going I'm to go down there and I'm going to help the, the massive influx of children who have been able to make this journey across Central America through the drug cartels and the terrorism that's going on through that, through that very dangerous thing. These eight-year-olds made this journey, so I want to be there at the border with teddy bears for them. I mean, do you really believe that? Does Glenn Beck really believe that? Do his viewers really believe that these eight-year-olds made this journey? Is he really just enabling human trafficking? See, that's the thing. We can have compassion for people, and there are things that we can do that make sense. But there are things that we can do that don't help them in the long run and destroy us in the near term. If you fly on a plane, as I just did on vacation, what do they tell you if the oxygen masks uh, drop down because you've got a problem? They say, first, put it on yourself so that you can help other people. It's not being selfish. It's being rational. You have to be able to maintain your consciousness. You have to be able to uh, survive before you can help other people. We can help other people in their countries. We've done that sort of thing in the past. One of the ways that we can help them is, not by, is by not creating massive civil wars for our geopolitical purposes. That's what our elites have been doing. We create these wars and we say, well, this is a humanitarian issue now. We, we seem to, we, we need to be able to help them. Again, from the Daily Mail, we can't take anymore, they say. Germany stops all trains from Austria as they reintroduce border controls and temporarily suspend the Schengen Agreement. They say Munich has become the main entry point. It is now at the breaking point. Remember when Nancy Pelosi went to the border? She said, I wish we could take everyone, all these children. Well, you know, Nancy Pelosi, first of all, has not adopted a single child. Let's understand that. In spite of all the millions of dollars that she has ripped off the American taxpayers with, with this corrupt system of government that we have, uh, saying that she's doing it in public service, she hasn't adopted a single child. But there's a reason that she can't adopt all of these children personally. With all of her money, with all of her power, Nancy Pelosi cannot adopt thousands of children. And you know what? The United States taxpayer cannot adopt an unlimited number of children, regardless of where they're coming from in the world. And that's, that's what we were saying. It wasn't an anti-Hispanic thing. It didn't have anything to do with where they were coming from. We know that there's a massive influx of refugees from China. We're going to have a massive influx from the Middle East. It's the number of people that are coming in. It isn't who they are. We all wish that we could help them. Of course, there's that, that wonderful... Uh, story about the guy who's walking along the beach with all the starfish that are on the ocean and they've washed up and, and they're dying and one guy walks over and he picks one and he throws it into the water and another guy says what what are you doing you, you you can't save all these starfish and he goes i can save that one i can save that one we can do that individually we can do what we can but we as a nation do not have infinite resources to take everybody in the world here and make them our dependents and of course they're not going people like nancy pelosi are not going to be spending any of their money to take care of these people who are coming in so where is all this going they've got 
We've got two different ways that this is being reported. USA Today takes the uh, takes a look at those who are holding welcoming rallies. They talk about there's tens of thousands of people in London, Madrid, Athens, Budapest, Lisbon, Warsaw, Geneva, Sw uh, Sweden, all part of the solidarity movement supporting the refugees. Fine. Fine. Will they bring them to live in their home? Will they adopt them? Or will they put them on the public trough and forget about them and go back?